All right, so this is gonna be um, just an exercise flow. So you can either do this seated or standing. I'm gonna do the first part seated and the last part will be standing. I've got my notes right behind there so I don't forget anything. So we're just gonna start with some basic shoulder rolls. You can roll the shoulders forward and think about the whole entire circle. The shoulders going all the way up to the ears, all the way forward, all the way down, and all the way back. And then go ahead and reverse the direction of that circle. Going backwards, opening up the chest, squeezing the shoulder blades together. And then go ahead and relax that. Take a moment to think about where your face is. A lot of times we're sitting with our face forward. So I want you to think about sliding your face back. I'll remind you of that a couple of times. So we're going to go ahead and take one ear to the shoulder. Just drop that ear as far over as it will go. Keep the shoulders relaxed. We're going to take one arm, the opposite arm out to the side, palm up. And you can even think about reaching that elbow away from you slightly. So I've got my elbow quite a bit below the shoulder, so we're not lifting that up really high. And then you go ahead and drop that hand down towards the floor. Keep letting that shoulder relax. Go ahead and bring your head back up. Drop the opposite ear to the opposite shoulder. Slide your face back. Take the opposite arm out to the side. Palm up. Reach that elbow slightly out to the side. Relax both shoulders. Slide your face back. Go ahead and let that hand drop down towards the floor. And then go ahead and relax that. Go ahead, bring your head back up to center. Drop your chin down towards your chest. Let the back of the neck relax. Keep letting your shoulders drop towards the floor. And then keeping your chest down, you're going to start to lift your chin up towards the ceiling, looking up towards the ceiling. Stretching out the front of the neck and the throat. You can close your teeth. Keep your jaw closed. Exhale, just in case you're holding your breath, go ahead and bring your face back to center. Turn to look out over your right shoulder. Imagine you could get your, your chin lined up with your right shoulder. Imagine you could actually turn your face that far to the right without moving your shoulders. And then go ahead and bring your face back to center. Turn to look out over the left shoulder. Again, thinking about getting your chin to line up over your left shoulder, keeping your shoulders relaxed down. Exhale, in case you're holding your breath. Go ahead and bring your face back to center. And we're going to do Frankenstein arms. You can reach your arms straight out in front of you. I like to keep my palms facing each other, so I guess it's not quite uh, Frankenstein arms, but palms facing each other. And you're going to reach your fingertips far, far, far forwards. You're rounding across the upper back, widening your shoulder blades. And then you're going to slide your shoulders straight back behind you. So from this direction, it doesn't look like I'm moving at all. So your arms stay parallel. They don't go wide when the shoulders come together. And you're going to reach those fingertips forward. Shoulders stay down away from the ears. And then slide those shoulders back like you're squeezing your shoulder blades together, but the wrists don't go wide. Reach those fingertips forward one more time. And then go ahead and clasp your hands. Reach the knuckles forward, really rounding the upper back, and let your chin drop down towards your chest. Take a nice deep breath in, expand the shoulder blades, and then exhale, relax the shoulders down away from the ears. Go ahead and relax your hands down. And we're going to do uh, wall angels, and I'm going to put those in quotes because you probably don't have a wall directly behind you, especially if you're sitting in a chair. But it's like you're making snow angels against an imaginary wall. So you're reaching the hands up overhead and then back down towards the floor and reach the arms up overhead. And exhale the hands back down towards the floor. Let's do that one more time. Reach those arms up. Try to keep the chest down and the shoulders down if you do, if you can, as you do this. And then reach those arms back down by the sides. And then we're going to do this um, peekaboo arms. This is really great for the shoulders. So you're going to put your palms together and steam up your forearms so that your elbows are touching. And you're going to keep the elbows touching and you're gonna separate the forearms. So the elbows are glued together, like you're making tong, your tongs, uh, your forearms are like tongs, and go ahead and bring those palms back together. Try that one more time. So it's the wrists that are separating, not just the hands. So we're making tongs, not a Y. 
elbows are squeezing together, and then go ahead and bring those hands back together. We're gonna flip the hands around so that the pinkies are touching, and you're gonna do the same thing. Keep the elbows seamed together and widen the wrists. You may find that it's easier if, you're, if your elbows are lower and harder if your elbows are higher, so that's one way to vary that. Go ahead and relax those arms down. So we're gonna do a couple for hands and wrists. So you're gonna make, I know I'm going fast, but I have a really long list that I wanna show you. So we're gonna uh, make like an okay sign with the, um, with the hands. So you're gonna put your index fingers to the tips of your thumbs. The rest of your fingers are gonna stick pretty much straight out. Hands can be down by your side, or elbows can be down by your sides, and you're gonna flex at the wrist or drop the fingertips down towards the floor. Imagine like you could get your thumb to your forearm. That's how much ooh, you want to flex at the wrist. And you're really keeping that O open. So the thumb and the index finger are really making a nice big O. All right, go ahead and open those hands up, and we're going to reach the thumbs across ah, the hands to the pinky pads, base of the pinky finger. Go ahead and open that back up, jazz hands. And then we'll reach that thumb across. Ooh, to the pinky finger, base of the pinky finger, and open that back up. We don't have a lot of stretches that we do with the thumb, so that's a really good one for stretching up and through here, especially if you have thumb and hand issues. So we're going to do um, prayer hands. So you're going to put the palms of the hands together. Elbows can be relaxed down, shoulders are relaxed down, and you're going to drop the wrists towards your belly button or towards the floor. But keep those hands seamed up, so don't let the wrists separate. And then we're going to flip this around and we're going to let those fingertips drop towards the floor. So you're attempting to get your fingertips straight down towards the floor. Mine aren't straight down. Mine are kind of pointed out in front of me, but that's that's what we're going for. We're going for a really nice wrist extension here. And then you go ahead and bring those, pink, those fingertips straight up, up again and we're going to go reverse prey hands. You're going to put the backs of the hands together. You can let the fingers kind of interlace with one another. And try to get the thumbs to touch if you can. So now you're going to keep the backs of the hands seamed up. And you're going to drop those wrists towards the floor. So now we're getting wrist flexion. Again, but in a different way. You're pr you might find that your thumbs want to separate. And you might find that your wrists want to separate. So you might come up a little bit higher. If you find that you come down so low, your wrists separate or the backs of the hands separate. Just come up a little bit higher. Just go down as far as you can, keeping the backs of the hands together. All right, go ahead and relax that and shake those hands out. Little twinkle, twinkle fingers. I like to call those twinkle fingers. So we're going to do um, some, some more hand and back of the hand, back of the wrist, forearm stretches. So we're going to get kind of into a power pose. So you can stand for this or you can stay seated. You're going to first lock the thumb in. So you're going to wrap the thumb across the palm and wrap the other fingers around the thumb to lock the thumb in. And you're going to put the flat part of the backs of the fingers against your waist and drop the wrists towards the floor. Relax your shoulders down away from the ears. And just in case you've been holding your breath this whole time, exhale. The inhale always follows. So it's not that we need to take a nice big deep breath in. Usually we need to take a long exhale out. Good one, right? All right, go ahead and release that. Open those hands up again. This time we're going to lock the index finger. So you're going to pull the fingers over and lock the index finger with the thumb. Don't let it go. You're going to put the backs of the hands against your waist again and drop those wrists towards the floor. Mm -hmm. Another good one, right? All of that work we do with our hands, all that fine work, all of that big work with the clay, oh my goodness. And if you spend any time on your phone, if you spend any time at the computer, all of these are awesome stretches. There's more in the other video. I'm just trying to go through a nice um, quick series here for you. Okay, go ahead and release that. So we're going to do a couple easy seated twists while we're still here in our seated position. So if you're standing, you may want to have a seat. You can do twists standing as well. So you're going to twist one direction, and since we're seated and we, our hands are clean, we're going to go ahead and use the hands to assist the stretch or assist the twist just a little bit. So you're not forcing this. You're just holding onto the chair, maybe pushing lightly against your hand, maybe pushing lightly against the chair. You can add all the way up to the neck by looking out over that shoulder. 
Take a nice deep breath in there in your twist. That's harder to do. And exhale, you might get a little bit more twist on the exhale. And then go and return yourself back to center and you're gonna twist the opposite direction. Again, easy seated twist. So we're not forcing this. Just find where your edge is. Be gentle. Try to keep your spine upright. Should be sitting on your sit bones if you can. Using the hands gently to assist the twist. And maybe looking out over that shoulder as well to bring the neck into it. Nice big deep breath in there. And exhale. Maybe get a little bit more twist on the exhale. And go ahead and return yourself back to center. We're going to do a seated um, side bend. So you're going to hold on to one side of your chair. You can also do this standing. Reach one arm up and over. Nice stretch through the waist and the rib cage. And go ahead and bring yourself back up. Reach the other arm up and over. Nice stretch through the waist and the rib cage. And go ahead and bring yourself back up. So I just wanted to talk real quick about pelvis position when we're seated. So I'm going to turn sideways for this one. And I'm going to grab my rolled towel so you can grab yours as well. So you're going to place your towel, and it's just a hand towel or a dish towel works really well. It doesn't have to be really big. And you're going to find it underneath your sit bones. Okay, so we looked at that on the pelvis. And you're going to allow the, the rolled towel to help you rock the pelvis forward. So when you rock back or tuck your tailbone under, you'll feel your low back round out, and you'll feel yourself kind of roll backwards on the rolled towel. So you're going to roll forward to tilt the pelvis forward and roll back or tuck under to tilt the pelvis back. So these are pelvis tilts. So I'm not really moving the spine much. I'm moving the pelvis underneath the spine. And then you're going to come up or you're up on your sit bones. You kind of feel the sit bones on the front side of that towel. And we're going to add in the spine. So we're going to do a seated cat-cow or flex extend or round an arch, whatever words make the most sense to you. So you're going to round your whole spine, tucking the tailbone under, reaching those arms forward, rounding the upper back, dropping the chin, and then go the opposite direction. So you're going to roll forward on the pelvis, lift the chest, reach the rib cage forward, and look up with the chin. And then round forward again, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone, pull the rib cage back, and then arch or extend the spine, roll the pelvis forward, look up, lift the chin, and then go ahead and come back to neutral. And I want to show you one more. Nope, covered it all. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and come to a standing position. So this will be where you may want your rolled towel. This might be really skinny for this one, so you can always fold it in half lengthwise. And that's not, I'm just realizing that's not going to be long enough. It'll be thick enough, but not long enough. So a rolled up uh, larger towel or a rolled up yoga mat would work really well for this next part as well. So I want to talk just a moment about hip hinging. Let you try that. So we've talked about it in the videos. So we talked about the hip creases here. It's hard, it's hard to imagine kind of where your pelvis is if you're not familiar with that. So if you take your hands and place them right in the hip crease, your pinky is against the hip crease. Your legs are straight and your legs are vertical. So a lot of us have a tendency to stand with the pelvis forward. So you're gonna shift your weight back so you feel your weight drift back into your heels. And then you're gonna hinge forward at the hips. And as you do so, your spinal curves don't change because we're moving the pelvis. And you should feel yourself start to kind of pinch your pinkies in between the upper part of your pelvis and your leg. And then you're going to go ahead and come back up and see if you can stop at that vertical leg without letting the pelvis go forward. So keep the weight back in the heels. So go ahead and hinge forward again, pinch the pinkies between the leg and the pelvis, and then go ahead and come back up. You might even feel the backs of your legs working to bring you back up. Try that one more time so you're hinging forward. So this is great to practice actually bending forward and working out in front of you. This works for lots of life stuff, picking stuff up off the floor, getting stuff out of your car, picking up children, picking up a piece of paper off the floor, and go ahead and come back up. So now we're going to do tiny little squats, mini squats, easy mini squats. So you're going to sit your butt back. It's like you're sitting down into a chair, 
and I can't do this right now because I actually have the camera sitting on top of my stool. So you're going to sit back into the chair like you're sitting towards a bar stool. So your knees aren't going to go forward. Your knees are going to go back because your butt is going back. And you're going to stand back up. So it's almost like you're going to sit down, but you're not quite sure where the seat of the chair is. So you're sitting back, butt goes back, and butt untucks. So think, stick it out. And go ahead and stand back up. Do that one more time. Little tiny squat. Bend down. Knees don't go too far forward. Butt's going back. And go ahead and stand back up. Okay, so this is the part where you'll need your rolled up um, towel, yoga mat, or even your book if you're using a book for tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and place my rolled up yoga mat here. You're going to put the balls of both feet up on whatever you're using, and you're going to want something to put your hands on. So I'm using the back of my chair here. The balls of both feet up about the width of your pelvis, and you're going to keep your knees straight for this one. So we're not going to bend the knees here. But you're going to do that same hinge forward. Your butt's going to go backwards, and you should feel a stretch up the backs of your legs. If you're really tight in the backs of your legs, backs of your thighs, your hamstrings, or the backs of your lower legs, your calves, you can also do this same exercise with your feet flat on the floor. Okay, so that works also. You're going to hold that for 30 to 60 seconds. See if you can relax your quadriceps. If your knees are locked out and your kneecaps are up, see if you can relax the quads. That's kind of a tricky, a tricky ask. And go ahead and come up from there. And then we're going to do a thoracic stretch. So if you're doing this with your hands lower than like the height of my chair here, you're going to want to put your hands a little bit higher. So the back of a chair works well. Countertop height works well. Hands on a chair, even hands on a table, sometimes a little bit low, but whatever you've got. You want your hands on something. And you're going to do something very similar to what we just did, but nothing under the feet now. So your feet are going to be flat on the ground. You're going to hinge forward again from those hips, but this time the focus is on the spine. So you're going to let your chest drop down towards the floor. Maybe even think about letting your chest drop between the arms. You can let your head relax down towards the floor here as well. And if you find that the backs of your legs are really tight, you can go ahead and let those knees bend so that you can get, actually get into your spine. And if this bothers your shoulders, just bend your elbows a little bit. So if you want to think about a hand pressing gently down in between your shoulder blades here, that's a really great way to think about this stretch because this is a thoracic stretch. This is for the um, upper or middle part of your spine from the rib cage to the base of your neck. And go ahead and come up from there. And we're going to do a, a leg swing. So you're going to want to be up on something. So your hardcover book or your yoga block will work really well for this. I'm actually going to use a yoga block because that's what I happen to have here. So you're just going to stand on it. Nothing fancy. Remember, we're trying to keep it all really simple. You can hold on for this one as well. It does not have to be a balance exercise. And you're literally just going to let the free leg swing. So you want to let it swing as much as possible. You want to let it swing, I'm sorry, as relaxed as possible. So if you find your, yourself keeping your leg really stiff, see if you can let the knee relax. You can see my knee kind of bend as the leg goes back behind me. Depending on how high up off the floor you are, you may find that your foot is scraping the floor. So if you have a thin book, you can go higher so you don't have to worry about that, or you can keep the, the ankle gently um, flexed to keep the foot up off the floor. So just a nice swing just to open up through the hip there. Go ahead and try it on the other side. So just stepping up on your block or your book and just letting that leg swing as freely as possible. It's not about a glute squeeze. It's really trying to get everything around the hip as relaxed and loose as possible. Really great for undoing all of that sitting time, right? We spend a lot of time in that 90 degree hip flexion position or less than 90 degrees, right? If we're sitting at the wheel, usually um, your knees are usually a little bit higher than your hips. All right, go ahead and step off of there. So just one more, just a quick standing lunge. So most of what we're doing right now through this whole flow is stuff that you can do during your work time when you're in the studio. So a standing lunge, you can hold on again for this. It does not have to be a balance exercise. You're going to step back with one foot. I've got my heel up off the floor. And you're going to think about tucking your tailbone under. That's what's going to get us that stretch across the front of the hip. My knee stays pretty much, my front knee stays pretty much over the ankle, so it's not going forward. 
It's not about getting low to the ground for this particular lunge. It's about getting that stretch in the front of the hip. Let me go ahead and try that same thing on the other side. Step back with the other foot. Your heel can stay up off the ground, bending the front knee slightly, but you're really thinking about tucking the tailbone under. And that's what's going to get you that stretch in the front of the hip and possibly down into the quads. You might even be able to feel that lower down into the quad. Soon as I tuck my pelvis, I can feel that going all the way down towards my knee because I have tight quads and tight hip flexors, and you might as well. All right, go ahead and stand up from there. Let's do a standing um, side bend, so a standing crescent stretch. We did that seated. So you're going to reach up with one arm, take a nice side bend over your feet or about the width of your pelvis, and your pelvis stays pretty much stacked over your ankle, so it's not pushing out to the side. So this is to get this nice stretch through the waist here. And go ahead and come back up and try the other side. Reach up and over. In case you're holding your breath, exhale. And go ahead and come back up. And that's it. There's your flow.